didn't want to do this video. I didn't want to make it. I wanted to ignore this trailer that has been released. But you lot, you lot have made me do this. Too much discussion, too much criticism, too much talking about what the abomination of Rugby 24 is looking like. We had a trailer. This has been a couple of weeks this was released out. And I've done way too many of these brand new rugby games, trying to be positive, trying to promote the game, trying to speak positively about what we've been released is trash after trash after trash, after garbage, after lies, after trash about licenses, bullshit about face scans, delays, garbage games. Let's be honest, any title with rugby at the start of it has been nothing but crap since the beginning of time. You may get an exception of a really good match engine like a rugby champions. You may get an outlier like a classic John Lomu rugby. But anything in the last number of years, rugby 15, rugby challenges were a bit of a struggle. And then they just got progressively flatter as it went on. I've done so many of these, trying to be all sorts of positive that today, let shit ends. Today, we look at Rugby 24, and we are going to look at the continued insult to not only rugby as a sport, but to us as rugby gamers about what is being released this, well, this year? This year? You really think you really think it's coming out this year? Let's get on to this bloody trailer, because it's only 34 seconds long, but trust me, there will be at least a cut and a stop every two seconds of this trailer because, you know, I've seen the videos. I've seen all your other videos that people have made. Oh, it looks so good. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, premiership. <laughs> Piss off. Come on. Let's look at this from a better point of view. And now first things first, before we even start, let's, before we even start, where's this trailer? Where, where is this trailer? Oh, you've got to look at some rando's YouTube channel that's uploaded it? Where is it on Big Ant's Twitter account? Nope. Is it on Big Ant's other social media accounts? Their website? Nope. Nikon? If you got it? Listing sports games? No, not there whatsoever. Wow, let's promote our brilliant rugby game by doing absolutely nothing. As I said before, not only insulting to the sport, but also insulting to rugby gamers. Have you heard enough of this crap? Unless you're only 10 years old, you're probably not yet used to it yet. But for any of us that are clearly, you know, on the gooder side of 21 as myself being 21, you know, it's time to make a change. It's time to stand up to this garbage and let's be honest, you can be nice all you like. What do they do? They just shit on you anyway. So you know what? We've got a platform. Let's look at this trailer, shall we? Let's take a look. Come on. Let's go. Let's start. Let's start this trailer off straight away. Right. Play. All oh, the globe. Nice. This will be your second round again. Whoa, okay, this... Oh, stop. Oh, stop. Stop the bus. Okay. <sighs> Twickenham Stadium. I've watched this trailer before, right? I know where I'm going with this stuff. This isn't my first rodeo on this trailer. <sighs> Let me show you images from said premiership final. That, of course, this is supposed to be based around, okay? I think we can all agree on that. We've all seen this trailer before. This is based on the premiership final. And don't worry, it's not the last time we're going to be mentioning the Premiership Final. Twickenham Stadium, when the players ran out of the said tunnel, it had lights! Holy shit! That's like a... What? Lightage? Whoa! Okay, we got lights, right. So, look at these pictures. That's Twickenham Stadium when the players are coming out. What is this abomination? Darkness? With, of all players, Elliot Daly in front of us. Oh, God save us. What a player to have there. Absolute disaster of a name straight away. But regardless, okay, we've got a pitchback tunnel. You know, it's not what we expect. It's whatever. Okay, I, I can get past that. But it's nothing like Twickenham. And that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be here at Twickenham. Okay, let's move on. Let's, let's move on. Come on, let's go. Okay, play. Right, London, England. Ooh, let's get excited. Ooh, stop the bus. Stop the bus. What the hell is this? Okay. We're delaying the game because we want to execute all our face scans. Well, clearly, you've not got to this fella who, you know, after much discussion, is supposed to be Mara Otose. Is it? 
Is that supposed to be Mario Otoche? Now let me get some images here down for you to compare what Mario Otoche looks like. Um, okay, hair, nothing like that. His facial hair is pretty much as long as mine, which is nothing like what is on this picture. And not only that, we've not called him Mario Otoche for a long time because he's now called Naro Otoche. Because let's be honest, it looks like his face has been put between two big bricks and squashed even further than it already is. And then doesn't he normally wear headgear? When he plays rugby, I mean, most normally he does. Sometimes, sure he doesn't. So maybe we can allow that one to maybe a little slip by. But let's be honest, if that looks anything like Mara Otoje, then I have no hope whatsoever. Face scans, face scans. You know what? This brings me straight to a point straight away. You know, there's two reasons I fear for the life of this game. One is if this is a quality of face scans, then they're crap. And I fear for all the other players. Two, if you're so focused on these bloody face scans, you're clearly not focused on the gameplay. Which, let's be honest, if you've got a good gameplay, does anyone really care what they look like? Does anyone with half a brain that's just going to go, yeah, look, I'm Elliot Daly. No, they don't care. A good gameplay game is much better than some fancy looking guy that's probably going to be retired in a couple of years anyway. Speaking of retired, yeah, we'll get to that later. But look at the point. He's good now, sure, maybe if you got it right. But that looks nothing like Mr. Atolje. And like I said, that is narrow Atolje. Wrong here. Wrong chin. I mean, it's long, man. It's not that long. And then we got dreads. Wrong here. His face is a wrong shape. It looks something like it. He looks like he's just come out of a club. He's pissed and he wants to take you home for the night. Look at him. Oh, yeah, that's what he looks like. Flay Maro, bloody narrow Atolje. Let's move on because I can tell you one thing. It only gets worse from here. Let's swiftly move on. Yeah, you're a dickhead. Whoa, stop the bus. Okay, one player, two player, three player, four player. <laughs> What is he? What is he? Four, five players, okay? What numbers are those guys? I don't even know. But you notice one thing about them that was all very similar? Yeah. Same height, same weight, same thickness, same shapes, same everything. Every single player is the same. Mr. Cleavy here. Look at him. Right in front there. He's got the same shape as this chap. Which, um, who is this chap? Um, <laughs> it's supposed to be Maru Tuolangi. Look at his face! His face is literally melting! He looks like he's just been put under a hot iron! Look at him! I can't believe this is this is face scan, people! We have traveled the world trying to get face scans for this game! Well shit me bobs, that looks nothing! And I tell you, bring the images! Nothing like Tuolangi! I mean come on! Look! He's doing the he's doing the people's eyebrow! He's what is he? Is he the rock? I don't know what he is, but I mean, his face looks like he's been smashed by hot lava. It's melting. He, he, look, honestly, when I saw this, I'm like, oh, that's a pretty good picture of uh, Richie Moanga, aside from the, the face melting eyebrow. But I thought that was a pretty good Richie Moanga, and I've seen comments that people actually agree. That's not bad for Richie Moanga. Let's be honest, a number of things about Tuolangi here. Um... His tattoos aren't right either. So tattoos way off the mark. His face, he's normally got a mullet. So the hair is wrong. The face is broken. It's the wrong shape. It, it, it looks, come on, it looks nothing like him at all. The tattoos are just generic tribal tattoos that you get on any game that you can create players. There's nothing even close to what he would actually look. Look, pictures, images. Look, let me be fair here. Let me get something off Rugby Challenge 4, shall you? We? Let's get Rugby Challenge 4 off some rando of the fan hub makes this. Look what this looks like. I mean, you decide, but do you tell me? I know what the hell I prefer, especially of a game that's going all this, ooh, face scans crap that they're coming on about as well. You want to compare about a Tolja as well? Yeah, let's go back to him. Let's go back to him. Yeah, here we go. You got real life. You got this abomination. You got rugby challenge. I mean, to be fair to you, I mean, you decide. Honestly, you can decide. Let's move on. Let's go back um, to Mr. Tuolangi, shall we? Mr. Tuolangi. Okay, so we're talking about his face. Absolutely looks like it's being melted by a hot pot of lava. His hair's wrong. His tattoos are wrong. And he's got the same body shape as not only George Ford behind him, but also as Augustine Cleavy in front of him. Okay? Problem? Yeah. Massive problem. They're not all the same height. 
Let's be honest, they're not all the same height. Let's go forward just a couple of seconds here. Bang. Okay. Now, yeah, I see you going, what the hell is he going to talk about now? What number's on his back? Do you want me to go forward a wee bit more? Is that, that's a, yeah, I mean, come on, that, that's a three, right? That's, that's a three. So he's wearing 13, you know, he's, surely you'll be in midfield, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Tuolang is in midfield, okay, right. Now, we're all creaming our pants, aren't we? Everyone's going, Pff, oh, Premiership Rugby, Pff, we got the trophy, it's Premiership Rugby final, brilliant, amazing, we're licensing the Premiership. Come on, if you're going to license this, if you're going to replicate your trailer on what is the ultimate showdown of the Premiership final, for the love of God, get the players right. Okay, you've got face scans of Tolshe. Good. You don't know what number he's in. You can kind of get away with him. And of course, he did start in the number four jumper in that game. But these jokers right here, Mr. Tuolangi, Mr. Creevy, same body shape, same height. I'll, I'll just go back to that once again. Now, who played 13 in the Premiership final? Now, I didn't even watch it. I'm not even from that side of the world. Yet a little, just, 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 just a little bit of research will tell you that Tulangi played at 12. 13 was worn by Robert the Prayer. Now, who played number 12? <laughs> Augustine Creevy wasn't even in the 23. He wasn't even in the 23 match squad. Yet here he is. Why? Why? And why also, if you've travelled the world to see all these nations and players, do we only have, right now, two player faces? We get another one soon, which, oh, that one takes the absolute cake. But why do we not have any more player face scans than players who didn't even play in the competition? Uh, in the matchup, I'd say, in Cleavy, a guy out of position, put him in 12. Make it historically accurate, why don't you? Make things right if you're going to replicate this occasion. Okay, so let's move on from this, shall we? Let's move on. Uh, we go on from this. Okay, Tuolangi, wrong shirt, wrong face, wrong hair, wrong tattoos, uh, wrong broken eyes, face melting, just cabbageness, uh, wrong shirt, Creevy didn't even play in the game. The kids look nice, and, and you want to hang on. Okay, now, <laughs> that was a perfect pause. You want to go about here? You want to go here? Okay, I was going to talk about the kit colours because in this Premiership Grand Final that you're replicating for this trailer, Sale um, did not play in blue. They played in red. And it was Saracens who played in the white for all the colour blindness and all that la-di-da, jazzy-wazzy stuff. So that's um, fair enough. So you've got that wrong straight away. But then I can take on board that you wanted to promote the 23-24 kits. So maybe we can let that one slide. But let's get the numbers right, shall we? Let's get the numbers right. So, numbers right. Captain, leading the players out of the, leading the, players out of the tunnel. Captain? Le Captain leading players out? No, no. So there we go. We've got 19, we've got six, okay? 19 in the Premiership final was worn by... <laughs> this one is a really, really good one. But 19 in the Premiership final was worn by a replacement, no doubt, Mr. Josh Beaumont. Now, if you ever want to really fist it up world rugby and try and pleasure them as much as you can, hey, let's put the chairman's son... Right there, captain of Saracens, leading the team out. Didn't even captain the team. He wore 19 in that game. The captain was the number eight for that game. So, let's be honest, he wasn't the captain. John O'Ross was the captain. Second in line, I expect is Curry, because you, you can kind of, if you do shift it around enough, see that there's a bit of a Curry in there. Wearing number six, was he the captain? No, number eight. John O'Ross was the captain. So, straight away, how many errors do you want? Captain, not leading the team out from the front. Where is John O'Ross? Oh, we've not face scanned him. Piss off. You don't need it. It's a blurry back of a shot of his ass. You don't need his face scan, right? Why is Curry there? You don't need his face scan. Why is he even there? He shouldn't even be there. A reserve never really takes a team out unless it's a big, important matchup, which, again, I've looked back. It's not a big, important matchup. It's just Josh Beaumont, let's be honest. The fact he even gets out on the field anyway is a miracle beyond anyone's belief. But okay, right, moving on. Let's go on from that. We'll go on and just have a look at um, what else we can look at, right? We've had a look at the abomination that was uh, Creevy, not even the 23. Uh, we've got Curry second out, but Beaumont leading the team out as captain uh, in a replacements jersey 
of 19, sucking it hard to World Rugby, really getting in there, aren't you, Nacon? Really getting it in there, trying to love it up. You know, give us those discount on those licenses. We'll put your boy at the front of the list in the trailer. Don't you worry about that. Let's move on. Let's swiftly... Oh! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. But what the hell is that? What on earth is that abomination by this dickhead? Oh my goodness me, he's eating my mouse cursor. This is Elliot Daly, everyone. Again, Elliot Daly in real life. Elliot Daly on Rugby Challenge 4. Elliot Daly on Rugby 24. Just look at his face for a start off. I mean, there's a number of places you can go here with Daly. One thing here is he's got the same face shape as not only Naro Atolje, but also uh, Tulangi on the side. He looks a bit like Ford as well. And his body shape is the same as Cleavy um, in, at, at the hooker for sale as well. So what, I mean, where do you start with this? This is just shocking um, for Daly. And let's be honest, you can hear, if we go back a little bit here, right? Let's go back. Okay, now we can hear, okay, do you hear the crowd? Yeah, chanting, crowd waving. And here earlier, Daly's right in front of you going, come on! And you're going, you can't hear a thing. What, what, why? Why can't you hear Daly say anything at all about that? He's yelling at you, literally probably like that far away from your fat face. And it's just like, sorry, Elliot, can't hear you, mate. Your yelling is invisible as your play on the field, which is absolutely atrocious. But anyway, that's enough about Elliot Daly. You know what? No, it's not enough about Elliot Daly, because I've got a little bit more about this as well. Let's see him run out. Whoa, we missed something else here. But let's go forward, Mr. Daly, though, and we'll come back. Look at the shirt he's wearing. See that number 15? Looks pretty nice, doesn't it, that number 15? He plays for England on the wing. At atrocious decision. Where did he play in this Premiership final? Don't worry, I'll save you the trouble of looking it up. He played in 23. That's right. He was the outside back replacement in the Premiership final. Didn't even start. He is the number 23. Sure, he can come out of the tunnel here. That's fine. But get the right shirt on his back. That's the thing you've got to do. That is an absolute shocker that he's not even in the right shirt as well. So another bad thing about poor old Elliot Daly. If I'm going to go right back to things as well... Elliot Daly, oh my goodness me, let's go back here, I want to point out a little bit thing here, just, just short of this toxic screaming that is Elliot Daly, scene number 12 here, Lucio Sinti, great player, I really like Lucio Sinti, good little Argentinian, love to see him, um, where did he play on that, that day, oh that's right, just like Creedy, not in the lineup, not even in a 23 at all, all. On that day in the Premiership Final, that number 12 jumper that is worn here by Lucio Sinti, I presume it's 12, it looks like a 12, was worn by Nick Tompkins. So, Daly wore 23, Sinti wasn't in the team, Creevy wasn't in the team, Torlangi's wearing the wrong midfield jersey, Daly's wearing the wrong jersey. I tell you what, there's one man they did get right, and it's a dickhead at the front here, which is actually the captain of Saracens, leading now properly. Here we go, there he is, Owen Farrell, you see him in the front. Oh, the great man, Farrell! He's not even playing for Saracens next season. What are you telling me? The game's out of date already? Okay, there we go. We're one season in. Game finally releases. Let's be honest, Premiership's not got a huge amount of months left in it, does it? Premiership finishes. Farrell's gone. Game's out of date. There you go, your marquee trailer. Out of date. Literally, it's not even released yet, so who knows when it's actually going to be released and whether that will actually be right. So the sad part about this is um, that the one thing they do get right in terms of jerseys and players is technically going to be very wrong very, very soon. So the jerseys are wrong. The tunnels are terrible as well. Look how dark it is heading out onto the pitch as well. And then this. Twickenham. Okay, let, okay let's move forward, right? Let's go forward to about... Well, here looks good. Let's go to about here. Right, we can see a number of things here. Oh, the crowd. Okay, there's a, a grey crowd, there's a red crowd, and there's a blue crowd. Replicated a few thousand times around the, the field. Is that a great crowd? No. No, I'm sorry. That's a lazy, lazy, lazy kind of crowd as well. So the kits are the wrong colours to the finals. We can let that slide. Why is the trophy out on the paddock? It normally sits about here. Normally, at the, you know, before they actually get onto the field. So the trophy's in the wrong place. Does the trophy look nice? Ooh. And here we go. Stop me. Stop me there. What is this abomination? What is this abomination? 
Why can we not see the tunnel and a reflection coming back from where the players have just run out from? All we can see is the grass and we can see the stadium like it's a mile away, almost like it's a reflection on that side of the paddock. And we can see all this grass lines when literally, let's go back a touch here, uh, there's about that much of the field to look at. So why do we see like what feels like Meters and meters and meters of pitch when there's not even meters of pitch to even look at. So the trophy looks, although nice and pretty, in the wrong place. And of course the reflection is no true reflection of where it actually is anywhere. And then added to this, where are the referees? Like the referees normally stand out here in the middle or they come out of the players or they're standing to the sides of the tunnel when they come out. They're normally in some vicinity of somewhere where these players roll on out. So... Exactly where are they? I'm not even sure either. I am not even sure either. And then, of course, we'll be getting so excited ourselves about the stadium and the trophy and the premiership as well. Twickenham looks all right. How can you tell us Twickenham? The shape? It said London. It said London. It did not say Twickenham Stadium. Now, why would you enhance that at the start? London, England. Don't you think if you had rights to the name Twickenham, you would put Twickenham Stadium, London, England. Wouldn't you? I would. I sure as hell would. I wouldn't just be like, well, what stadium is this in London? Because let's be honest, there's just one or two stadiums in London and England, right? So, sure, it's Twickenham. That's where it's supposed to be. How do we know for sure? The shape, maybe. Not really. The fact that it's a premiership final, replicating, that's all terribly wrong. Maybe. But overall, you can't really tell it's even Twickenham Stadium. It's just another stadium in London. But let's not end there. We've got one more big thing coming up. One more big thing coming up from these guys. Let's go, Luke. There. Coming soon. Let me show you what they put on Twitter when they announced the last delay in late January. They announced it saying that there would be the early access available in March. We're here, we're in March, and what can we see? Absolutely nothing. So coming soon, my fat ass. We are sitting here. I'm recording this on the 15th of March. We are halfway through the month. Do we have any announcement? Do we have any date? Do we have any pre-order? Do we have any idea? We have nothing but this very inaccurate, underwhelming, disappointing trailer. Face scans? No. Terrible. That concerns me because this game has no focus on match engine. No focus on being a good rugby playing game. All the focus here is on being pretty, looking nice, and having 23 players each side running out in the field looking absolutely identical. Are we going to see locks any taller than scrum halves? I highly doubt it the way that this is going. It looks like they're all going to be extremely similar size players and all very, very similar. So coming soon... Take it with a grain of salt. We are halfway to April and we have absolutely nothing at all. So what do you think? Are we accurate? Are we inaccurate? Are we off? We're miles off? We're way off? We're close? What do you think about the trailer? Let me know in the comment section below. Remember, this is your fault. This is a video I did not want to make, but I'm tired. I am tired of making all these promising, promoting, exciting, encouraging videos about rugby games to just have them shit all over, not only me, not only you, but all rugby fans around the world. And of course the players as well. Wouldn't they like something that they could be in and actually be fun and look like not look like a absolutely smashed up impression of the rock? And then smash it with a pie? That's what we're getting delivered. For me, trailer, disappointing. Trailer is very inaccurate. Trailer shows me nothing of the game um, except that the face scans were a bullshit excuse to fob fans off not only once but twice during the World Cup leading into the Six Nations. And if we get another delay very soon going later into the year, I will not be surprised one little bit. If you can take someone's excitement level for a game from about halfway like it was, where I wasn't too excited about it but thought it could be a good game, Delay 1, killed that. Delay 2, destroyed it. Now we're looking at as much inverted excitement about a game as you could possibly get. Let's be honest, Tetris coming out in a slightly more 3D fashion will be more exciting than this abomination that we're beginning gifted out by these guys at Big Ant and Nacon. And let's be honest, from the history of their games as well from Big Ant, I don't think this is going to be a finished product for quite some time.
Whether it does come out on early access, it won't be cheap. So you can expect to get that gorse out of your pocket. They're going to straight away price people out of the game. They're going to straight away push people away from it because the hype of a World Cup is so, so long gone that they won't even be interested in rugby anymore. Sad times ahead for rugby fans. Tell me I'm wrong. Change my mind. Do your best in the comment section below, but I'm out of here. This is your fault. This is all your fault. I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Don't forget to smile. It could always be worse. See ya.